Donald Trump is surging in the battleground states, helping his chances for the 2024 presidential election. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics, your channel that essentially will not be beholden to any mainstream media punditry. And we're going to be looking at the swing states and how Donald Trump has completely changed the ball game from just four years ago. Make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe because you won't want to miss any more content leading up to the election. Make sure to comment down below if you want to leave some thoughts and follow me on X in the description down below. And so looking at the battleground states, guys, we currently see that in 2020, Joe Biden won the presidential election with 306 electoral college votes to Donald Trump's 232 electoral college votes. We see that he basically took all the swing states with him, including Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, with the exception of Florida and North Carolina. Usually, the presidential candidate winner tends to win the majority, almost all of the actual swing states. For example, in 2008, Obama practically won every single battleground except Missouri and Montana, only missing two key battlegrounds. Obama basically won every battleground except North Carolina. If we go to 2004, Bush, this one was a little bit different. He actually didn't even win most of the battlegrounds. It was roughly tied. There was actually a lot of battlegrounds in the 2004 election. There was about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 different battleground states in 2004. In 2000, we had plenty of battlegrounds. The 2000s were a little bit iffy when it came to the battleground states, especially during the Bush administration. But if we look here, I mean, Clinton clearly won most of the battlegrounds in, you know, pretty much 1996. And in 1992, he won the majority. I mean, H.W. Bush destroyed Dukakis in this election, including Reagan's both elections. As well as Jimmy Carter, this one was fairly close. They, they were about even. But at least since 2008... The swing states have practically broken, mostly one way or another, depending on who the winner is. And right now, Donald Trump, in the RCP aggregate, currently now has all of the regular states that are actually the toss-ups now in the toss-up category. In 2020, they would have had the Rust Belt basically painted all blue already for Joe Biden, which wouldn't have really been the case. If we look at the swing states, Donald Trump is tied in Pennsylvania. He's up in North Carolina. He's up in Georgia, up in Arizona, he's down in Wisconsin barely, and he's also down in Michigan and Nevada by just about a point. Now, you may say, well, that's not really great for him, but these are the same pollsters that have underestimated him quite consistently in the September polling. In the October polling, he actually tends to catch up quite a bit. And even with Pennsylvania, we're already starting to see signs of that. I mean, Biden was polling at 7.2 percentage points of a lead, just not even that long ago on October 1st, 2020. And now Kamala Harris is leading by two percentage points with Reuters being a pretty big outlier in that aggregate. And so when we see that, you clearly see that the race is not a lock for Kamala Harris. Even Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by this amount. And didn't even win all the swing states. I mean, she lost the election. And Pennsylvania, we see a lot of polls now are either tied. You have Bloomberg and Fabrizio that kind of have a little bit of an outlier. But most of the polls you could see here are tied. Or Trump is actually leading those polls. We had a couple more polls that were more Harris-leaning initially. But we're getting a lot more ties. And some more consistent Trump leads in the state right now. And so that's going to be pretty fascinating moving forward. And once that Bloomberg outlier kind of goes away, you're going to get a Trump plus one aggregate in Pennsylvania on RCP, the same state where Joe Biden was leading by 6.3 percentage points. And now currently only he only won by one. So if you were to apply that shift to this, Trump would technically be up in Pennsylvania by five, which is around where we actually have him up by, by the way, that's currently somewhere around our actual forecast in the state. And on the national level, he's performing five to six points better depending on the aggregate. And uh, looking at 538, they're an aggregate that is probably going to be even more wrong because you have a new owner, G. Elliott Morris, who removed Rasmussen Reports, who actually was one of the more accurate pollsters, despite its, you know, pretty much its correlation with some right wing media. But who cares? 
how they distribute. I mean, left-wing pollsters distribute their polling on left-wing media outlets all the time. The New York Times just endorsed Kamala Harris, and they have their own polling firm. Like, of course, like, you know, it's it's so facetious to assume that just because a pollster is is, is distributing their information on right wing source media means that they're automatically biased. It's just it's just a really big psyop from the mainstream media who want you to believe that Kamala Harris is the favorite right now. But looking at the data, looking at reweighed polling data, looking at the national shift and looking at the cross tabs with some of these polls they haven't really changed their methodology quite a bit and they're missing a lot of new voters that would vote for donald trump and so that's going to be a huge problem for kamala harris going into these states i mean georgia and north carolina we have both of these states over five points right now i think georgia is a six point win in my forecast and north carolina is about a seven point win and those are similar to what the latest Quinnipiac poll had. Now, North Carolina, they had a Trump plus two lead, but they've been historically bad in North Carolina. In Georgia, however, they've actually had a pretty good track record in their average. They almost got a perfect result in 2020. And they've consistently had Trump up against Biden by a lot. And they found the same margin now with Harris of six points. And their polling in Georgia tends to be a lot better. And it's matching up with my estimation in the state right now so that is fairly interesting to see that come out of the state like quinnipiac technically quinnipiac would be an a-graded pollster for georgia so that is pretty fascinating arizona and nevada are also in the likely column in our forecast just because donald trump is gaining with some subgroups in nevada and arizona especially hispanic voters and those you know white working class you know non-college educated voters but also people in the food service industry the no tax on tips policy from donald trump is really appealing to those kind of voters and so he's got a pretty good luck on the sun belt and he's one state away from winning the presidency and we have him getting there through wisconsin and pennsylvania those are the states that we think he's going to win it through he's probably going to end up Locking down the Sun Belt and probably winning Wisconsin. In my forecast, he's currently up by about six and a half to seven points. And in Pennsylvania, he's up by about five to six points, depending on the day, give or take. Depends on the popular vote, but that's around where we have it. And looking at these additional states, those are, these are states that are going to be decided by under five. Michigan is a little bit subjective because you could even say Michigan would probably be likely but currently, our forecast has it as Trump plus 4.9, which is on the border of being a likely state. It is currently in the lean column. However, Donald Trump has made good gains here. I mean, he's appealing to manufacturing jobs here. He's appealing to workers in that industry by basically saying he's going to impose tariffs on foreign companies that are trying to sell product to the united states or companies that leave the united states that's very appealing to a place like michigan they've lost a lot of their automobile industry over there so that's going to be huge in terms of you know donald trump gaining the state you know the israel hamas war isn't going to help you know kamala harris either in a state like michigan or even in minnesota and minnesota in my forecast right now is actually about a tilt margin for trump but it is technically a toss-up it does tilt Trump in my forecast, though, and that is actually the final state he wins in this video. New Mexico is about a lean margin, give or take, in the forecast. Virginia technically is also lean, too. I'll probably include Virginia in this video. I don't know why I left it safe blue, but they are about two to three point victories in my forecast. And when we look at the last election, New Mexico voted for Biden by 11 and Virginia voted for Biden by 10 points. So clearly, there's been a massive shift in these states. Clearly, Donald Trump is doing better with Hispanic and African Americans, which New Mexico has a lot of Hispanics. And there's a sizable African American population in Virginia. So that's definitely going to play a role there, too. Nebraska second is a lean Democrat state right now, or at least a lean Democrat district. The district has been kind of moving to the left. So that's definitely something to look at there. And Maine at large is just above a point victory for Kamala Harris. And New Hampshire is effectively a toss-up right now. And even when you look at the reweighed polling data, when you basically get the data and you reweigh it to a correct party ID, as pollsters in New Hampshire don't tend to do that and they miss a lot of subgroups there, they are always massively off, especially in September, by the way. The October polls usually tend to narrow up and the candidates that wins tends to improve in the final polling and that has been donald trump for the last two cycles the new hampshire aggregate in 2016 was actually pretty good 
and the one in 2020 was off by three points to the left. I suspect that if pollsters keep up with this response bias and missing certain groups, they are going to have a big problem in New Hampshire. And Republicans have netted voter registration now by over like 50,000 votes in New Hampshire, which for a state like New Hampshire is a humongous lead because there's not really a lot of people there. It's only got four electoral votes. And so that is crucial for somebody like Donald Trump. Having that much of an improvement with party registration is definitely key to winning the election. Now, that could have been from GOP primary voters essentially flipping from being a Democrat to Republican to vote for Nikki Haley. However, the important thing to note is that this trend had already started pre-announcement of Nikki Haley's candidacy or even pre-2020 primary. The trend had already been beginning in the state of New Hampshire as of right now. So it's very fascinating to see that state be relatively competitive. Kamala Harris just had to go campaign there not that long ago. And it's very possible she holds on to Minnesota. Right now, my model currently has it as a very tight race, but that's currently where we sit here. I think Arizona is about a five to six point win, and Emerson came out with a three point lead, and they've been a little bit iffy in Arizona. They've overestimated Joe Biden by a few points there before, so that's a good sign for my forecast as well. But overall, Donald Trump is dominating in the swing states, and when looking at Gallup, guys, this article that was written by Jeffrey M. Jones. This is very compelling stuff. All of the key indicators that Gallup has pulled for about three decades all favor the Republican candidate, including economic confidence, party identification, and leaning, which tends to accurately predict the popular vote. And that has Republicans up by three. U.S. satisfaction is at an all-time low. Presidential job approval is at an all-time low. And party better able to keep America safe from international threats is plus 14 for Republicans. So everything is looking good for Donald Trump in terms of all the real data that we can have from a pollster that essentially has been polling for decades and really started the polling industry. Their first election was actually the 1948 presidential election when Thomas Dewey faced off against incumbent Harry Truman when he was running for re-election as the incumbent president after being ascended to the presidency after becoming the VP. And so... That is it for this video, guys. Donald Trump is dominating in the swing states and is on track to win the 2024 election quite decisively as of right now. Make sure to hit the like button to subscribe if you didn't enjoy this analysis. Go ahead and comment down below your thoughts and make sure to follow me on X so you can go ahead and look at my additional content over there as well. I will see you guys in the next video.